Good morning. Well, this works. I want to thank the pastor for letting me um, speak today. Um, working on trying to get a, a voice that works better. And um, I'm uh, looking forward to speaking with you. I'm um, going to be looking at James. Um, you'll see it's up there for us. Wow, that's great. Um, the scripture exhorts us to continue in sound doctrine. That means to, to learn and to follow the good teachings of the Bible. We are to believe the truth about God. It's important what we believe, right? If you live by your beliefs, you, um, you need to know what they are. And, and we do. The church has, a, has always known that learning the truth about God is necessary for all Christians. Education and teaching has always been part of the important task of the church. And that's why we have Sunday schools and we have um, Bible studies. Right now they're um, <clears throat> still going on, right? We are commanded in the scripture to teach our children and bring them up in the knowledge of God. In early times, the church required converts to memorize and affirm the beliefs of the church before they were baptized. There are more books about theology, I found out, which is the study of God, than anybody could read. But um, growing up in the church of God uh, and uh, remembering the, the Church of God Reformation movement uh, after the church had grown for about 50 years, uh, we began to get organized and, uh, and start Bible schools and some of our best thinkers be began to write theologies. The study of God is what theologies are. Um, three of the Church of God um, men who wrote these theologies were um, F.G. Smith. He wrote a book called What the Bible Teaches, and uh, I enjoyed that a lot. Then there's two Christian theologies, also one by Byron and one by Gray, and they were both called Christian theology. Um, but they explain kind of the understanding of God that we have as a, as a church. The church wanted to define what we believe and help people to understand the Bible better. Uh, and that's why we got the books, right? Um, do, do we know what we believe? Do we know what the Bible teaches? Many things are involved, and I look around and know that, that you know about these things, and that's good. Many things are involved. For instance, who is God? Is there a trinity? How is the church to live? What about the last times? All these things are important, and we teach them. But sound doctrine is something that we live out, uh, not something that you know in your head, but something that you use uh, day to day. When I was uh, at Azusa Pacific College, uh, it was called uh, APC back then, Azusa Pacific College, and um, used to be uh, affiliated with the Church of God, and I, they changed their name when I was a senior from APC, which is a good name, um, Azusa Pacific College, to APU. I never really liked that idea. Uh, APU just didn't sound right. I thought it was a joke. Um, can you imagine going to a college named called APU? Um, something just doesn't smell right about that. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, well, while I was <laughs> while I was there before it was uh, APU, I got the opportunity to go to Columbia for the summer and uh, learn Spanish better and meet a lot of Church of God people. I was really a, a, quite a an interesting thing. Some who were uh, 
some, some who were affiliated with the Church of God uh, because the, the Women's Missionary Society helped to, to pay my way and, and sent me places to, to meet people. I met Church of God people who were in Colombia and, um, and, and met with them. One of the men was uh, uh, kind of a, a, an evangelist that went around, and he uh, took me to a senator's house, <laughs> Uh, and, who, and the senator gave us um, fantastic food, and the man was, you know, I, showing us that he was trying to, to, to get this senator to, to be a believer. Um, there was also um, a woman that I, that I met there who also was a Church of God leader, and um, uh, she couldn't read um, or write, because she never learned to do that, um, which is, which I was thinking was kind of nice because you don't have to put out any Christmas cards. But, um, it, but she she couldn't um, she couldn't read, but she had memorized like almost the whole Bible, and and could pull out whatever scriptures she needed, um, and also hymns. She knew hymns um, in Spanish, um, but you know the Church of God has has Spanish hymns hymn books. And um, I was used to those in Mexico also. So anyway, she spent a lot of time in prayer uh, in her life and also in going to meet other people um, to help them. Um, this lady was kind of, I thought, more of a theologian than, than many people who were theologians. She really knew what she was doing and why she was doing it. So theology is the study of God. One of the church fathers said that a theologian is someone who prays. Um, I often think about that. Um, it kind of makes sense to me. The theology, true theology is knowing God, and sound doctrine is living the way God wants us to live. It's not arguing over who understands the Bible correctly. You know that a church has become useless when they divide over small details of what they believe. Many people believe that if you don't agree with their doctrines, then you're not a Christian. Uh, Christians argue over whether the Bible is infallible or inerrant. Um, they, they argue over the millennium. What is it? When is it? Where's, is there a rapture? Um, is it a seven-year rapture or a three-and-a-half-year rapture um, in the millennium? Um, those things, mostly the Church of God hasn't worried about. Um, and unfortunately, I guess, or fortunately, we don't see that much of, of, of these ideas anymore because there are so fewer Christians going to church. And <laughs> there's no reason to be arguing with each other anymore. We've got to work together. Um, some of the other things that they've argued over is, is the question of free will, um, um, predestination, or, um, or even over like spiritual gifts um, of what God is doing today. Now, of course, what I believe about the things is, is right, and those people are, that disagree with me are wrong. All right, I'm kidding. But who, who cares really? Um, I'll tell you who really cares. Non-Christians don't care at all um, because uh, when they see a divided church. So what I'm saying is, you know, non-Christians see churches dividing and arguing over things. That is not a good, um, a, a good way of getting people to know the Lord. We're coming to a time when I believe churches may be getting closer to each other uh, because <laughs> they're just they're, um, less Christians. And I, I think we're learning to, to work together better and to pray for each other more. I have a friend that became a Mormon when she was a child. And I asked her why she did, um, because she had grown up in a church, a Christian church, and she said, because the Christian churches are all fighting with each other. And uh, sometimes 
I suppose it looks like that to, um, to non-Christians. Um, non-Christians don't care who's right about the millennium and all of those other things I was talking about. Um, I don't think God cares either about our opinions. What God cares about is that we're doing his word, that we, that we draw close to, to, to him and that we do what God has called us to do. Now, now is a time to encourage other Christians that we might run into. Um, one of the sad things that you hear about is church splits. Now, church splits can be good. In fact, our church was uh, fortunate that several families left a church in turmoil and chose to come here. Right, Keith? <laughs> One of the divisions now in the churches is over politics. Mm -hmm. Politics are important. We're taught to pray for our politicians, our leaders, but our families and friends and neighbors should be um, loving also, uh, loving one another, regardless of their politics. Um, I'm proud of the Church of God because we've always believed that sound doctrine is not believing certain creeds or uh, lists of belief, but it's living the way God wants us to live. True theology is knowing God, and only the Holy Spirit can teach you true theology. Jesus said, The Holy Spirit shall receive of mine and show it unto you. It's in John 16, 14. The Holy Spirit shall receive of mine and show it unto you. Only those who have the promise of the Father dwelling in their hearts can really be theologians. And there's one more prerequisite. Romans 12, verses 1 to 2 says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice to God. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may experience the perfect will of God. It doesn't say, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you learn the right doctrines or believe a creed, but that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice. What does that mean? It means that we present ourselves to God so that he can do whatever he wants with us, dead or alive. What is a living sacrifice? We are to be a living sacrifice um, and God can do whatever he wants with us. He can send us wherever he wants to and we will say, yes, Lord. Remember Jonah? <laughs> uh, God can reveal himself to you and through us because we belong to him then be not conformed to this world. It's unbelievable how the ways of the world invade God's called out people and try to conform us to the spirit of the world. And that's happening. We're looking around. Churches are getting pressured. Our beliefs are not just questioned, question, questioned but are uh, uh, mocked. Um, when I was young, um, some of the people didn't believe in going to movies. But now, all you have to do is turn on the television. Um, TV teaches us that it's funny to be drunk, that it's normal to have sex with anyone you can, that uh, divorce is good, that if you have a problem with someone, you can just shoot them. Um, the people who go to church, and especially preachers or psychs, uh, um, psychos, <laughs> uh, weirdos. Um, a friend of mine said, um, it was uh, at, uh, I'll just remember that he's a friend of mine. Um, I won't mention Richard's name. He said that people on TV come into our, to our homes and do and say things that we wouldn't let an outsider come in and do or say. But now, we have computers, and uh, computers is a whole nother thing. 
the way people uh, spend their time uh, bringing all kinds of junk, right? Some good things and a lot of junk. Um, people can find um, worse things, uh, but uh, the world <clears throat> tries to conform us to its um, image, but we're told to be conformed to the image of God. The spirit of the world is the communist spirit, the end justifies the means, the capitalist spirit, anything's okay if you make money and what's good for business is good for the nation. The humanistic spirit, which says we don't need God. The, individ the individualist spirit that says look out for number one or whatever feels good, do it. Um, we're to be transformed by the renewal of our mind. That means that we are growing to be more and more like Jesus because more and more, he's living in us. Don't, see, we are beginning, we are being transformed. We're not the same as yesterday. Our church is being transformed. We have seen God renewing us and making us into the image of Christ. But we have to be willing to continue to grow. Sometimes we pray, Lord, show us your will, but we're not going to change. Um, renew us, but not too much. The Christian life is one of growth and change because we have sacrificed ourselves. Jesus didn't come to bring a new philosophy but a new life, an abundant life. Came, he came to teach us God's will in our life. He didn't tell his disciples, today I'm going to teach you about the millennium, and tomorrow I'm going to teach you about the Trinity. Jesus went to a party, and he saw a Pharisee come in and look for the best seat. And he said to his disciples, did you see that? Don't do like that. When you come to a party, take the lowest seat. When you give a party, don't invite those who can pay you back. Invite the blind, the poor, the beggars, those who cannot pay you anything. And your Father in heaven will reward you. Now let us look at some sound doctrine from James chapter 1 and uh, 21 and 22 here. It says, Therefore put aside all filthiness and excess of evil with meekness, Receive the implanted word that is able to save your souls. But become doers of the word and not simply hearers. That would be to deceive ourselves. Now, I believe that I, that I know what we think that says uh, the word is the Bible. Doers are those who do it. But I believe that this um, says a lot more than that. The word is not just the Bible. We say that the Bible is the word of God. But the Word of God is, is far more than that. The Word of God is that which God does. God said, let there be light, and there was light. The Word is the activity of the Holy Spirit. We call the Bible the Word of God because it's inspired, God-breathed by God. It's inspired by the Spirit of God. But what we understand here is that in humility, we receive the spirit implanted, which is able to save our souls. It's the, uh, we receive the spirit implanted, which is able to save our souls. There's more than that. Um, in this book of James that we are looking at these few verses about, it's, uh, it's a farming, he's using farming terms. The word doers is, when a, is what a plant does when it grows. Yeah, We receive the Spirit implanted in us like a seed that produces products of the Holy Spirit. We bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. So as we draw close to God, we find these things that God implants in us so that we can grow and be his people. In verse uh, 21 and 22, um, again it says... Um, Be 
Therefore, put aside all filthiness and excess of evil. With meekness, receive the implanted word that is able to save your soul. This verse is explaining what Jesus explained in the parable of the sower. You can find that in Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 18. It says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that receives the seed into stony places is he that hears the word, and then with joy receives it. Yet he doesn't have root in himself, but does for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he's offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty, but bears fruit. Someone can be what the world calls a theologian and just be a hearer, not a doer. You can know the Bible and not live by the Spirit. Someone can believe creeds and doctrines and not have the love of God. Um, verse 26 uh, in First James again. Uh, if anyone consider himself religious, Without bridling his tongue, and while indulging his heart, this person's religion is worthless. If we understand the church doctrines, um, but we gossip and hate and judge and hold grudges and conform to the world and hurt others and divide, if someone knows what they believe about spiritual gifts and end times and the resurrection of the dead, uh, but they ignore God um, and are not living in sound doctrine, it's of no value. Verse 23 of James says, because if anyone is simply a hearer of the world of the word, a hearer of the word and not a doer, that person is like a man noticing his natural face in a mirror. The same word, as doer, to bring forth not like those who heard, but had never produced. So you can be a hearer, but not do anything with what you hear. In James 21, 22, it says, um, For he glances at himself, and he leaves, and he immediately forgets what he looks like, and he looks in the mirror. But the one who has gazed into the perfect law of freedom, and has remained there, has become not a forgetful hearer, but a doer, a doer of deeds. This person will be blessed in everything he does. It's sound doctrine to accept people of, uh, as they are, and to love them as God loves them, and to share what we have. To visit orphans and widows, to turn the other cheek, to pray for those who use you, those are in James. If we are growing from day to day, if we are encouraging others and sharing the peace of God, then we are living sound doctrine. Um, it's so easy to say you believe um, one thing and live different, a different way. We have to prove that we are products of God's Spirit. The only way we can do that is by sacrificing ourselves and receiving the Word of God implanted in us, and we become products of the Word when the living Word of God indwells in us. That's pretty much what I have to say. So when we leave today, 
We should leave with God's Spirit growing in us and loving one another and sharing God's love. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mark. And now we will sing in the freedom that we have as we are about to share that love. Um, it was a challenge as I had prayed because we will soon leave and we will have to leave and share that peace that you were talking about that's God's. So let us stand as they lead us in a closing uh, song this morning. But I'm going to pray as we are standing. God, we thank you for these moments of words that we have um, been able to open up our ears and hearts to and uh, may we not just take a word in but as we have been uh, given your words that we are a doer and sound doctrine God if we if we struggle with that in these moments may our hearts be changed may we just ask for that forgiveness God I I know you have so much more for me um, help me to be the doer that was spoken of in your peace. If those of us that are um, standing here today knowing that I, I, am, I have that sound doctrine, God, may our eyes and ears be open to every opportunity that we have to share your peace. God, thank you as we worship. In Jesus' name, amen. There is peace and joy in the Lord today, more than all in this world of sin. There's a happy life in the holy way, praise the Lord I have entered in. Praise the Lord, I am free in His love and grace. His blood reaches me, I abide smiling face I am blessed today I am free indeed what a pleasure to serve the Lord how it fills my soul with delight to read in his sacred and holy word praise the Lord I am free in his love and grace his blood reaches me I abide neath the smiling face since my cross is gone and my heart is right oh how blessed to be his will now his yoke is easy his burden light and his spirit my soul doth fill praise the Lord I am free in his love and grace his blood reaches me, I abide neath the smiling face. All his grace is free as the air we breathe, we may each have a full supply. If we all obey his word believe, he'll prepare us to dwell on high. Praise the Lord, I am free. In his love and grace, when his blood reaches me, I abide neath this smiling face. Amen. It is so good to have each and every one of you with us this morning as we have had the opportunity to listen and to worship together. Just a reminder, Bible study that was spoken in the sermon today Bible study is at 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Look forward to see you as we continue our studies in Genesis. Uh, we might be up by 31 or something like that. Uh, uh, the, you know what? As you spoke, Pastor Mark told us one time, you know, those numbers and stuff were put in way later on 
you know, to help us along. And so I'm just reading stories along with Pastor Mark as he is leading us. And so what I want to do is just ask you to be here Wednesday at 4 p.m. Thank you to Christian and Lauren who led us in worship. And, and Pastor Mark, thank you for uh, bringing God's word to us as we are about to leave this place. A reminder uh, to everyone, contact someone that you have not seen here today and just uh, bless upon them. As we stand to be dismissed, God, we thank you. Um, and as us, that it is not us, but it is you uh, living in us. And may we take that with these steps out as we have been uh, uh, heard this morning. And may we do our walk and our talk in your.